there's not a zip line to your future and God doesn't have helicopter rides to just take us from one high point to the next. It doesn't work that way. When you experience the death of the dream, the reality is this pathway that you're going to walk, this path towards purpose is going to take you through the valley of the shadow of death. And after you have forgiven it and you're on this path, here's the next step. And, and I, the, you're not going to like this one. I know it. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have to suffer through it. Welcome back to another episode of the Darren Early Wine Podcast. So stoked that you're with us. And we are in the Resurrection of Purpose series, moving into week four. And I, like I said last time, I'm loving this series, loving the feedback we're getting from you. And I love, love, love to hear from you and what God is doing. I love doing the podcast, right? But I, we send this information out into the world and uh, love it. The thousands of you are downloading the episodes, but uh, we don't get to hear from you that often. And I get it. I've got a ton of favorite podcasts. I listen to them when I'm mowing, listen to them when I'm taking my dog Theo for a walk, listen to them while I'm working out. And I don't always get done and think, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just email whoever my favorite podcast person is. And I usually think they probably don't want to freaking hear from me. I'm just a guy in Indiana mowing his lawn. Listen, I don't care if you're just a guy in Nebraska mowing your lawn. I want to hear from you of what God is teaching you, questions you have from the podcast, and you have a couple different ways to reach out to us here uh, every single week. You can always email me directly, Darren, D-A-R-O-N, at blackbirdmission.com. You can also just reach out through all the socials, tweet at me, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook, just look for my name on there and, and follow, and you can hit me up with a DM, or you can text me directly, 317 550 70 317 550 5070. You can text me. Would love to hear what you're learning, questions that you have from this series, and how that we can help you. So this whole series, guys, is, is setting up the launch on October 18th of, of a groundbreaking new book by a new author. Let's see if I have it here. Ah, yes, here it is. Death of a Dream by Darren Earlywine. <laughs> I hope you thought that was funny because if you are watching this on YouTube, you hopefully thought about the wonderful scene in maybe one of the greatest movies ever made, What About Bob, when Dr. Leo Marvin does that. Anyway, if I have to explain jokes, they're probably not good jokes. Book's coming out, guys, on October 18th. I want you to get it. I want you to get a pre-order copy of it. Get in line to get this when it comes out on the 18th. Uh, it will help our cause and help us get the book out to thousands more people if we have a good launch day on the 18th. And the way that you help us with that is by pre-ordering the book at barnesandnoble.com or wherever books are sold right now. And here's the deal. We're going to run it again this week. You guys loved it last week. And I want you to get involved in DNA because there's a part that you need to understand to go through spiritual DNA to see your purpose resurrected. The first 10 people that send us a screenshot of their pre-order of the book this week, we're going to once again give the first 10 people three, uh, three months free of spiritual DNA. It's a $97 value. You get the whole course, all the video, the assessments, everything for free. So you buy a $15 book, you get a $97 course for free. All you got to do, pre-order the book, send us a screenshot. Uh, just email me. Uh, or email, actually, no, email Julie, J-U-L-I-E, Julie at blackbirdmission.com. That screenshot, and we will set you up for three months free of spiritual DNA. So, put that back on the book. You stay back there, buddy. All right, we're going to the next. We just talked about forgiving it last week. Now, listen, uh, next week's episode is going to be a more of a feel good episode because this one is still difficult. This one's a difficult one. We're just going deeper into the depths of this process because the process of seeing your, uh, um, your purpose resurrected, right? I want you to think about this. It, it is a process of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It is. The good news is we talked about in the first couple episodes that God is with you, right? His rod and his staff, they come for you. He is your good shepherd as you walk through this. Because what happens when you walk through a death of a dream? I've heard this illustration said many times. I want you to think about you standing on a mountain, right? You're standing on this mountain, Things have gone wrong, and God gives you a vision 
for where your future could be and you see it, you see the mountain in, 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 in the distance and you can see it's higher, it's a greater elevation, the view, everything is gonna be better up there. And you say, that is where I want God to take me. I now have a vision, Darren, for the purpose that God is beginning to stir within me. And it's up there, it's over there. Well, there's, there's just, there's not a zip line to your future. And God doesn't have helicopter rides to just take us from one high point to the next. It doesn't work that way. When you experience the death of the dream, the reality is this pathway that you're going to walk, this path towards purpose is going to take you through the valley of the shadow of death. And after you have forgiven it and you're on this path, here's the next step. And, and I, you're not going to like this one. I know it. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have to suffer through it. You have to suffer through it. And um, depending on how God's created you and your spiritual DNA, I've told you guys before, right? Uh, I'm an evangelist apostle, um, type seven on the Enneagram. I don't like painful emotions. I don't like things that aren't fun. Uh, I don't like suffering through it. But what I have learned time and time and time again in my own life, as I've walked with people through the resurrection of their purpose, as I read the Bible over and over again, every story contains suffering. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And um, we could break down the theology of it, maybe we will in another episode, but here's what I know practically from my life. The best things I've ever learned in my life the things that have humbled me, that have made me able to receive more of God's grace and blessing and direction, the great breakthroughs in my life, steps of maturity that have set me up to be able to handle the weight of, of, of God's call in my life. I, I could think a little bit longer and maybe come up with some of those that have come through amazingly awesome, wonderful, perfect days. But at least in my journey, the majority of the good stuff I learn, guys, is through suffering. It's through the process of learning the hard way. And a lot of times that it, maybe it's just me, but I, I can be pretty dull. I, I feel like I have to learn things the hard way most of the time. And honestly, I, I bet you do too. And that's okay. Because what I want you to know is this, is when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, when we're walking through this process of having to suffer through the pain that we've walked through, God is not against you in it. He's for you. And I hope this one principle can begin to shift the way you see the process of suffering through this loss. Because it is. It's difficult. I, I, I in no way, shape, or form have I ever tried to, to, to discount or, or, or downgrade the pain and the suffering you've experienced and whatever the level of death of a dream you've experienced. It sucks. And you suffer through it. But here's what I want you to know. As you're suffering through these moments... God is not your punisher, bar none. God is not walking next to you or behind you through the valley of shadow of death as you're suffering through this process and whipping you with a whip or beating you or trying to trip you or laughing at you. He is for you in this, not against you. He is not your punisher. And in this chapter of the book, I, I, I start with this, this quote from uh, Albert Hubbard, which says this, we aren't punished for our sins, but by them. I've shared it with you multiple times here on the podcast because for me, that was such a game changer when I read it. And, and it helped me understand God's role when I'm suffering through sin, whether it's sin that I've caused or it's sin that other have caused that bring into my life is this, is I am not punished for my sins. I'm punished by them as I'm walking through life. When you walk through the pain of something, and especially if you have killed your own dream, if your actions have self-sabotaged your life and you see God is somehow mad at you or laughing at you and just throwing you know, negative thing after negative thing at you because he wants to punish you for the fact that you screwed up, you don't know the heart of God. So often when we go through life and we allow sin to disconnect us from our source, to disconnect us from God, there is consequences that come into our life in our, our sinful actions, the things that we choose to do apart from God, they're the things that punish us. 
right? Last episode, if I'm going to be at a place, guys, where I'm going to be sinful in that I am going to withhold forgiveness from someone, and then I go through that list we talked about in the last episode, the bitterness, the rage, the anger, the slander, all these things, when I begin to invite those things into my life, there will be punishment that comes from that with broken relationships and people that slander me back and the, and the lack of, of peace that I'm going to have in my life. All, all of these things that happened, right? I mean, I could be literally a hell situation where I'm so bound up in bitterness and anger that my my blood pressure, my like my body is beginning to shut down from it. And in that, God's not being like, well, I'll, I'll show you. Here goes your heart attack because you won't forgive. No, no. I am choosing sinful actions in my life. I'm choosing sinful attitudes in my life. And what's happening is I'm receiving the punishment for my actions. God's not punishing me. You look at the story that we walk through in the in the, in the book, right, with Joseph. Was God's Joseph was was God Joseph's punisher in his whole process? No. Right? You look at these processes. It, it, is he's betrayed by his brothers here. He is sent into slavery into Egypt. Was God like, I'll show you, Joseph, right? Enjoy slavery in uh, Egypt, you big jerk. No, it says God was with him, and God blessed him in that moment, right? Then as Joseph gets wrongly accused of sexual assault and sent to prison for years, was God in that moment being like, well, I'm going to show you, Joseph. I'm going to punish you. Here comes your punishment for what? No. In both these situations, God wasn't a punisher, right? He was his protection, and he was providing for him. Right, which we've talked about here on the podcast before too, that the realities of being in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ is you're becoming one with him, means he's near you, not far from you, and he's for you, not against you, and that he has promised to protect and provide for you. He's not interested in punishing you, right? Even Jesus said that in John 3, 16, 17, 18, right there, he talked about that God sent the, 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 the son into the world, right? right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life because God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn it but to save it. He's not interested in condemning and punishing you. He's interested in letting you see his heart that he is here to protect. He is here to provide but he's also, here's here's the point and this is a tough one. He's also here to purify you. You see there's this big word in, in scripture sanctification which is this process of becoming more and more like Jesus and less and less like me. The process of saying he must become greater, I must become less, words of John the Baptist. God's will is to sanctify your life, to set you apart, to make you holy as your heavenly father is holy. And the reality is that purification, that sanctification process often comes through suffering. It just does. And when we get into these times of suffering and pain, one of the things I, I, I unpack in the book, right, is that it brings us down to we often get a choice of what kind of pain we, we, we deal with most often. And whether it be the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. In the book, in page 144, it says like this, I hate pain. Who doesn't? But running away from it, patching it up with our own solutions or trying to numb it just makes everything worse. Surrendering our pain to the God of love and inviting him into it is the only way for a story of pain to be transformed into a story of passion. Only then can we finally see our dreams as, as a creative collaboration with the greatest healer of all time. You see, when we look at that, we have to understand that there are two pains, pain of discipline, pain of regret. Pain of discipline hurts right now, but long term, there's a lot of joy. Pain of regret, I skip the difficult decision, the difficult discipline that I need to bring in right now, but long term and maybe forever, there's regret. And you look at guys at the story of two gardens, and we unpack this in, in this chapter of the book, right? There's the story of the Garden of, of Eden and the story of the Garden of Gethsemane. Adam and Eve chose the pain of regret. They were tempted to, to distrust the heart of God, thought he was holding out on them, thought he didn't approve of them, thought they could be more powerful. All these things that we may have gotten into, we may have bought into that may have sabotaged our own dream. I mean, if you look at Adam and Eve, I mean, in a lot of ways, this is a massive death of, of, of their dream, a massive death of God's dream that he set up that he wanted us to live eternally with him in his presence. 
Adam and Eve choose the pain of regret in that moment. And we've been regretting it ever since, right? But then we forward, fast forward to, to the New Testament, to the Garden of Gethsemane, right before Jesus is, is, is going to fulfill his purpose, which God sent him on earth. And it's painful. They're suffering. They're, it says that Jesus literally was so burdened that he suffered to actually sweat drops of blood from his body. That's suffering. And it was in this suffering that I think it continued to bring purification and sanctification and setting apart Jesus for God's will in his life. Because in that moment, right, he says, listen, I, I hate this. If there's any other way, but not my will be done, your will be be done. I trust you. I choose the pain of discipline. I choose the pain of obedience right now, trusting that you are at work through this suffering. And guys, that that is is something that I, I believe that only the Holy Spirit can empower you to do. But it, it's it's not something that I that I think has a shortcut. And I don't know how long your your season of of, of suffering is going to go. I hope it's a, as short as possible. But I do think there are times that we, we can delay or prolong the seasons of suffering when we won't bring ourselves to, to submit, to allow God to begin to purify some of the character corners and issues that we have in our life. And as we can begin to agree with what he has called us to be, oftentimes we do expedite ourselves through those seasons of suffering, but you can't get around them, right? The only way is through. Here's the good news. The good news is this, is not only does suffering purify, but it also brings about passion and vision and illumination to our life. Because that word passion, me, paseo in the Latin, literally means suffering. So when you go through suffering, it's going to purify, it's going to sanctify, it's going to do in you what only God can do usually through suffering because we learn things the hard way so often. He's not punishing us. He's there to provide for us. He's there to, to protect us, but he's there to purify us because he's setting us up to become the kind of person that can handle the weight of the purpose that he is giving to us. Guys, you look at the, 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 the story of Joseph. What God was doing is he was like, Joseph, here's the deal. You're a, a punk, arrogant little kid that just wants to talk about how great his dreams are. Here's the deal, though. What I know is happening in the future is I need to raise up a man. I need to raise up a leader that can handle the weight of authority of the entire nation of uh, the whole the nation of, of Egypt to be able to handle the authority to 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 moderate the the the, the you know the the keeping of, of seven years of provision for the known world. I need somebody that can handle their weight of responsibility that I can actually allow and trust them to lead through the process of which my people will be saved. I need to be able to lead, have somebody that's so purified that their character is so strong that I know that in the moment when they remember their dreams of their brothers that have betrayed them, they're gonna be able to forgive. I need someone that is gonna be a personification of the Beatitudes. I don't know. I, I, I'm making this up. This isn't in the Bible. I, I don't know that J that Joseph would have become the person that, that that he needed to be in his life without the suffering he went through. I just don't. And I can tell you, there's no way that that I am am whatever version of, of myself that I am. I know that the 44 year old version is a much better Christ follower, husband, dad, friend than the 34-year-old version of me was. And the, the, the thing that, that began to purify me in that process was suffering. The great thing, though, was when we embrace that, we are given back passion. And when we have that passion, we find the things in life that we're willing to suffer for. And when we connect our passions with God's heart and what he is most passionate about, it's at that point that now the resurrection of our purpose doesn't become disprobable, like, like, like possible, but it becomes probable. It's going to happen because now the, the, the reality is this, is when you're able to trust God with the pain and the suffering of your life and he gives you back a passion that connects with his heart and what he's doing, now your heart can be trusted. If you've come to the point where you've said, you know what, I've come through this. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I don't know what the next purpose of my life is. I know my dream has died, right? I've mourned it. I've let it go. I forgave it. I'm suffering through this process. Now I just want what you want, God. I want your will to be done in my life. Whatever passion, 
passions, whatever desires, whatever thing you want most that's still there, right, that can be trusted. That is your tuning fork, your true north of a purified, by suffering, a purified passion given to you by the heart of God. Throughout the scriptures, we have so many of these uh, uh, scriptures that just talk about the zeal of God that's going to accomplish his plan. It is the zeal and passion of God that's going to move you forward in this resurrection of purpose, right? It was Jesus' endurance of pain on our behalf that unlocked the opportunity for anyone, for everyone to experience the fire of his passion for us. Page 150 of the book. So good. So true. Here's the last thought I want to I want to give you, and then we'll we'll close in this episode. Romans five three through five gives us the the blueprint of this one. From the message, it says it like this: because we know our troubles, our suffering, can develop passionate patience in us. I love that passionate patience in us, and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue. Like that, isn't that the kind of person that you want to be? As you step into the purpose that God wants to resurrect in you, do you want to be a person who, it's like, well, you know, they, they have the, the kind of a, their tempered, uh, their virtue is kind of made out of like aluminum, right? It's, they have a tempered, you know, virtue of aluminum. So basically if anything comes their way, They'll probably lie, steal, cheat, whatever they need to do to get by, because the, the character there is is it's it's copper, it's wood, right? No, I th- this is the kind of person I want to be. That I have a tempered that my virtue is of steel, tempered, proven steel, that will keep me alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. I want you alert. I want to be alert for whatever God will do next. And what he's going to do next is take you forward to the plan that he had prepared in advance for you to do. Will you become the kind of person that can actually step into that plan and succeed? If you'll embrace this season of suffering, and allow him to purify you and begin to illuminate your heart and your desires for the future, you will not be shortchanged. Pain that is surrendered and transformed into passion will become the greatest indicator of where God needs your extraordinary gifts in the future. That's it. Here's the last step and we're done. How do you start that process? Psalm 37 helps us, where the psalmist says this, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You want to become the person God's created you to be. You want to have steeled virtue. You want to allow this this, this, this suffering to purify you, to set you up for great passion. Delight yourself in God. He's not your punisher. He's walking with you. And as you learn to delight yourself in him and in his presence and in his plan for your life, he will provide, he will protect, he will purify, and he will get you ready for the resurrection of purpose that your heart so desires because your heart has found delight in him. I want you to step into it. I want you to experience it because I know God has great things for you and he's not going to shortchange you. That's your next step, friends. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If it's helped you, if you think it would help somebody, share it with three or four friends out on the socials or, or just you know, text them. Let them know, hey, this podcast is helping me. I think it could be good for you. And, uh, and then maybe go buy them a copy of The Death of a Dream. Pre-order a copy for them. Send it to two or three friends. And uh, first 10 people that send us a screenshot of the pre-order this week, we're going to give you uh, three months free access to spiritual DNA so you could step into becoming who God's created you to be. Thanks again for listening to this episode. Appreciate it. Can't wait to talk to you next week right here on the Darren and the Wine podcast. Oh, remember, God's for you, not against you. He's near you, not far away. And he's created you on purpose and for a purpose. Yeah.